It is the touchline here on Y254, a big sports weekend when it comes to mothers, rugby, football. Some people are already contemplating not going to sleep because you've got rugby coming up at 5 in the morning, you've got Manchester playing in the afternoon, and then at the end of the day, you've got the El Clasico. So, it's all matches that people will be talking about and everything, but now I've got a new set of guests joining us here in the studio. I've got Samuel Mwana Wanjuguna coming here for Russ today, and also I've got Idi Shikanda, a Kenya Premier League player who now plays for Zetec University. Big week, we've got to talk about the Champions League and the Europa League first before we do a preview of the weekend's big matches. Winners and losers of the UEFA Champions League, Sam, who will you take it to be? The biggest winner, I have to say, uh, has to be Manchester City. Yeah. I think for them going into Benabou and coming out with three points, mm -hmm. and more so the fact that uh, one of the most uh, the core players of Real Madrid, that is uh, Sergio Ramos, will not be there in the second leg. That, yes. That's a very big boost for them. Mm -hmm. uh, losers, I think Chelsea. Yeah. But as much as we, I would go for Arsenal also, but I'm going for Chelsea because I didn't think they gave at all against Bayern Munich. They didn't look like they were challenging at all. It seems as if they were aware it's going to be a beating. But now, 5 nil. That's, that, that has got to be... It, it's not, it's not was acceptable. Was it 5 nil or 3 nil? It was 3 nil. 3 nil. Yeah, uh, yeah, still, still, <laughs> still, <laughs> still, 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 it's Chelsea it's fans will be on your neck. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's, yeah, it's, an, it's unacceptable. Two goals on our side. Idu for you. Which one was your winner in the year for Champions League? A big night. Mm -hmm. It was a big night for Manchester uh, City. Yeah. Uh, pulling, uh, getting all the three maximum points at the Bernabeu. Mm -hmm. Now waiting for the Real Madrid to come at eight hard yes. to just uh, finish off the business. Mm -hmm. So too bad. It was again too bad for the Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, they lost at home against uh, uh, against uh, Bayern. Bayern Munich. Yeah. As it was. Too disappointing for the Frank, Frank Lampard's uh, charges. Yeah. So I think they'll go back to the drawing board and try to pull a, a, a win at uh, Bayern Munich's at Bayern. Uh, home. Is it yeah. a wake up call for Frank Lampard? Because when he came on to Chelsea, he had all the good results any fan would want, any player would want. I want to go and play for Frank Lampard. But as he's progressing and we're coming on to the end of the league, we're coming on to the last stages of the UEFA Champions League, it seems that these teams are not good enough to go against these established teams like Bayern Munich, Manchester United itself. I think uh, Chelsea are a young team. Yeah. They still need time for them to develop and grow. Mm -hmm. But still, having said that, if you look at the game at, uh, at, at Stamford Bridge against Manchester United, yeah. that was a game you'd think they would probably win. But mm -hmm. you see the way Manchester United played and Chelsea seemed second to, uh, at everything from, yes. from, uh, from the second balls. They were second at it. Mm -hmm. uh, Manchester United, yes, did play well, but Chelsea didn't look at, uh, as if they, they were themselves. Look at the same game against Spurs. Now they yes. had improved mm -hmm. and they were playing well. And going to the Bayern game I thought uh, at least they would uh, at least challenge even yeah. it wouldn't be a bad result you know if, if it was 3-2 you would at least understand yeah. but again Bayern Munich are very strong let's, let, let's give the credit where it's credit, due yeah. they are very strong but even though that's the case Frank Lampard right now does not know his best goalkeeper mm -hmm. Kepa is on the bench <laughs> Caballero is the one who's starting yes. he doesn't Tommy Abraham since he got an injury he has been having a problem on the front line yes and and again Oliver Giroud is doing well, but he's not good enough. He's not the guy you're going to expect to give you 25 goals in a season. All right? It, so, he, 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 I mean, he must find a way. And, and ZH is a good signing for them and will be coming in in the summer. Yeah. But at the moment, even holding on to the fourth position where they are right now is going to be a mountain. A mountain for them. Yeah. People are, okay. Yeah, Robert, yeah. about Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, ha I'll have to add something about Chelsea. Yes. Frank Lampard's, Lampard, he has been there as a player. Yeah. yeah. He knows the philosophy of Chelsea since yes. he was a kid. This is a team whereby you are not going there to, to again uh, to nurture talents again. I don't think if Abramovich will be uh, of more patient yes. with him, yeah. uh, because this is not a team, this is not a club. It's a big club in uh, in, in the world. It's Performance is yeah, everything. Yeah. So I don't think if there's that room for the uh, developing players. Yes. I think for the Past seasons, past years, we've been having Makelele, mature players, and yeah. all those best players in the world. 
talk of uh, uh, Frank Lampard himself, talk of Makelele, talk of... Uh, the players at the moment don't yeah, get to that caliber. I, I'm telling you. Yeah. So I think Frank Lampard is getting wrong at uh, Stamford Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you see, again, again, if you, we, we may battle Frank Lampard, but we have to agree he never had a chance to sign players yeah, in the summer due play. to the ban. Yeah. Uh, so so he's, he's doing well with the team he has, but he has to find some form of some kind like they had during the start of the season. Because right now we are on the home stretch of the season and seemingly they are off the pedal and that will cost them so much. People are not talking about one team that I saw scared when they played in the Champions League for the very first time and it are going to be Barcelona. They are playing against Napoli and in that game, Napoli looked to be the better side against Barcelona. I, I was actually hoping they would name them as the losers of the, the, of the week. But again, that Arsenal loss was dramatic. And, and yes, again, they're, they're off the Europa League. But I think for Barcelona, if you looked at that game, they looked confused. They looked like they didn't have a plan per se. Yes. They didn't. I don't know. I've never seen them that bad. Yeah. But it looked like even Messi is in the pitch, but you don't feel his presence. It looked as if Napoli were aware of everything. They seemed to have a plan and they were following that plan. Yes. And again, um, I'm wondering what will happen in, in the new camp, which will be very difficult for Napoli. But even getting 1-1 one, one draw uh, away for at San Siro, that was a very big, big, big win for Barcelona. Because on the night, they played poorly. Bismo performance for them. The paper said blaming the Barcelona board of not signing good players. Can that be the case, Eddie, considering that every player who goes to Barcelona it's is a considered player. a yeah. good a player. player? Who is not Definitely. a good player in Barcelona? Yeah. If you name, actually, if you name the team that was playing, you had Griezmann in that team, yeah. you had Messi on that team, yeah. you had Gerard Piquet in that team, Which you had Tan Steyn on that team. What, what are, who is, do you want? Yeah. So uh, I think they are wrong uh, yes. from their sentiments. Uh, so uh, it only happened that it was a game of, it's, it's a game of football, it's yes. a game of mistakes. It's where, uh, you either uh, pull a win, a draw, or I lose. Yeah. So I think Barcelona had a very bad day. That day everything did not work on there. Yes. Uh, as their expectations, mm. uh, talk of Messi, talk of Griezmann, talk of uh, Suarez, yes. talk of all the departments in the team, mm. in the Barcelona's team. So I think they had a bad day that day. Yes. So I think they'll have a chance to pull the triggers back uh, at their new <laughs> now. Yeah. They have failed in the Champions League, both Madrid lost to Manchester City. Barcelona travelled to Napoli and they had a draw of 1-1. Tomorrow seems to be a league decider in Spain. Yeah. Between, I think Barcelona is leading by two points, Real Madrid is on 53 <laughs> and they are coming for this one. Is this the game that will decide the league in Spain this season? I can say yes, but if you look at the loss of Real Madrid last weekend to Levante, mm. then you're just going to say, if I say yes right now, it's not going to decide the league because maybe they will lose to Getafe. Who knows? Who knows? And, and yes, it's going to be, it's, it's a massive game because yeah. uh, it's a must win for Real Madrid if they want to keep their title hopes uh, in the air. Yes. The last time they won the titles in 2017. Yeah. It's been two years. And even in 2017, they had stayed almost five seasons without a title. Actually, and it has been, uh, it has been Barcelona. Won the league, I think, once in seven yeah. years. So, so <laughs> it has been all Barcelona, so they really need to break that dominance of Barcelona. Yeah. And again, in the, in the in the recent years, uh, Real Madrid has not been doing well in the El Clasico at all. So missing Eden Hazard in such a game is a very big it miss. Is, but yeah. who knows? That, that, that is a big question. Is it a reality check for these teams that now their key players are gone and they have to rebuild? Because you look at Barcelona, you like it, you don't. <coughs> Sergio Busquets is at the end, is at the tail end of his career. Gerard Pique might yeah. actually not play in the El Clasico. Yeah. Messi is also getting catching old, up. catching up, per se. On the other side of Madrid, they don't have Cristiano Ronaldo. Here comes Eden Hazard, who was brought in with big money, is not playing. How is that affecting these two sides tomorrow? I think uh, uh, when it comes to Derby, yeah. There's no team that uh, enjoys its uh, its good form, yes. or uh, it's is it, maybe starting off anything its can happen. bad form, yeah. yeah. Because uh, when it comes to El Clasico, maybe any derby, yeah. it's more lively than any other thing in the world. So I think there'll be more that toughness, that mental toughness, mm -hmm. that that uh, uh, that urge of winning the, uh, the match and the the competence 
between the two the two teams. Yes. Yeah. This teams met earlier in I think in January. Yeah. Um again in an El Clasico. Mm -hmm. And these two teams, if you looked at that game, it ended as a barren draw. But that game looked like having goals. If you looked at the first half, each team had opportunities. Now come to this weekend. I'm really looking at uh, Real Madrid and asking myself, without Eden Hazard, Gareth Bale is not trusted by, uh, by Zinedine, Zinedine, Zinedine Zidane. Zidane. So I'm looking at where do they get to create chances? Now they have to trust Vinicius Junior. They have to trust him. The goals for Madrid this season have come from, from Benzema. Benzema. So Benzema. again, if Benzema has a bad night, then it means it's a bad night for Real Madrid. <laughs> so go to the other side. They have to rely on Isco. Yeah, and going to the other side, um, you look at um, Barcelona, they're missing Luis Suarez. And it's a very big miss. Let no one say anything else because sure. Luis Suarez is the core of that team. The way he plays, the way he, he brings the other players, he brings in Messi, he brings in Griezmann. And he seemingly has made Griezmann look as if he has been in that team for over five years yeah. with his presence in there. Now he's not there and they now have to find some way playing Griezmann up front or bringing in the new boy Fatih and they have to find ways of playing. So yeah. it's, it's quite a tough game. Experience wise because Barcelona past the, they don't have Luis Suarez, they don't have Gerard Pique, Sergio Busquets and all that. They have now young players. They have this new kid, the son from Lille, Brightwood, I think. They have also Ansu fight in, in, in the team. Are those kids capable enough to go against the likes of Isco, who are well versed yeah. with the league, yeah. the likes of yeah. Sergio Ramos, Sergio Ramos. at the moment? Can they do it? I, I don't think if they have uh, that uh, enough experience to uh, handle the, the other side of Ma Real Madrid yeah. uh, stars, because these are the young bloods that are being introduced in the El Clasico. Mm -hmm. So I think they have, they'll have it rough. Uh, despite them not having that uh, stage fright, but uh, yes. in terms of El Clasico, I think they'll have it rough against the big guns uh, like uh, Mod Lucas Modric in, in the middle pack of the field of Real Madrid. Yes, yeah, big one there that we are going to be having. But now, for I think uh, in the last ten years and twelve years, one player has been deciding the derby has got to be Lionel Messi. But this time round, he's going against Madrid without his core backup. Can he still perform? Messi is Messi. He will still remain the Messiah. So <laughs> there's actually... The <laughs> <laughs> no, he still be the Messiah. I, I think yeah. I, if you look at the defense of Real Madrid, he's been yeah. shaky this season. Mm -hmm. So th that gives him an opportunity. And him being Messi, you expect him to produce something from nothing at any minute of the game. Yeah. So I think he still could be the difference in that game. But again, we have to... Uh, I really have... I think Real Madrid, the only way they can get a point in that game is playing as a unit. Because... This is not the time you would say Ronaldo will come up with this magic. This is not the time. You're not expecting Benzema to, to, to do the magic himself. Robert, so, again. I'm surprised Robert is saying be, uh, Messi banging four goals is a fluke. <laughs> 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 you can't guess four goals. Yes. So, he's, he's just Messi. The way yes. he has said that he's just Messi, the Messiah. Yeah. We know. I remember uh, when they were playing uh, uh, Club Athletic yes. Madrid, um, they won by a solitary goal, yes. and it came from him. Mm -hmm. So he'll rise up whenever he's needed. Well, it is the <laughs> touch here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. Sort of. I've got someone Mwana Wanjuguna and Idi Shikanda here for the fan zone. El Clasico, that's where we live, but I've got to get that prediction. I'm a Madrid fan. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly speaking, I see Real Madrid have so much at stake. Yeah. So for them, it's it's a win, win, they, win, win. So they are actually on the verge of yeah. losing the champions. So, so, so yeah, so they they really have to fight. I think I'm gonna go um, two one in favor of Real Madrid. Put that on the card. Favor of Real Madrid. Eddie? Uh, I think Barcelona will carry the day. Ooh, will be here next week. <laughs> <laughs> that is the El Clasico, and it is one match that comes once in a while. And when it comes, the world lights up because two of the biggest clubs in the world have to fight it out <coughs> for bragging rights. And this time round, the league is at stake. So let's also go ahead to some of the matches to one of the biggest leagues in the world, and that is the English Premier League. Big matches that are happening today. We have got Brighton Half playing home to Crystal Palace. It's the early kickoff match. I think that match has actually 
kicked off at the moment. And then we got Bournemouth playing home to Chelsea this afternoon. Newcastle are also welcoming Burnley into their home. And then West Ham are playing Southampton. And then we'll finish off the day with Watford playing home to Liverpool. Those are some of the biggest matches that we'll be following for you there. Can this be a comeback way for Chelsea as they are going to play away to Bournemouth today, considering that Bournemouth are trying to cement themselves away from the relegation zone? Bournemouth only two points above the relegation zone. Yeah. They are in a, streak, a winning streak that um, destroyed last weekend by Arsenal. Yeah. But uh, again, I think this weekend uh, will be a very tough game for Chelsea. Yeah. But I see them having the cutting edge in this one. They have the quality in the team. So I expect them to at least take this one. Uh, but it's going to be a tough game. Maybe 2-1 or 2-0 uh, for Chelsea. 2-0 <laughs> for Chelsea. Bournemouth have defeated Chelsea before. Yes, it's not, that's what I'm saying. It's not going to be... And, and the biggest problem, this season has been a, a roller coaster for Bournemouth. Yeah, they lost yeah, the only 11 first team squad was yes. off in injury mm -hmm. so they're still coming back they still have to find some form of some kind and i don't think in this one that will work for them they 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 still have to kind of fight in to get a win there but chelsea william will make something up from nothing it, yeah the fifth position at the moment is the most sought after position in the league at the moment and chelsea knows that crystal palace knows that level manchester knows that yeah. And Chelsea, they slipped up against Manchester United. They came back against Tottenham. They slipped up in the Champions League. But they seem to have consistency in the Premier League. Against Bournemouth and away, is this a game that Frank Lampard tells his players that you have got to go out there and get that win? Definitely. Those are the, the remarks uh, maybe from the uh, Frank Lampard's uh, mouth because uh, yeah, actually, it's a huge blow. Yes. He, he has got uh, four, quality, uh, four key players yes. who have got injuries. Talk of Pulisic, talk of Kante, talk of Abraham. Uh, so I think they'll not feature for the Bournemouth match. Yeah. So it's not going to be an easy match against the Bournemouth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, also Bournemouth, they want to uh, come in, into this match yeah. uh, <coughs> with a uh, well contented, well with a, that encouragement of just pulling themselves out of the uh, relegation yes, zone. Sorry. So I think Chelsea also, they've got a chance to make it better uh, this weekend. Big man, Sam. Mm. Now, another one is, away from the Champions League position that is being sought after, any team that is between position 5 and position 11 at the moment has a chance to qualify to Europe. We've got teams that are fighting for Europe. Crystal Palace is in that category. We've got Burnley in that category. I Burnley don't... might actually make it a back-to-back -to, -back to Europe. The St. Wolves are also there and Sheffield United. <laughs> are these the teams that are now changing the status quo in England? Because now, it is a long time that you do not expect Arsenal to be in the top four. They are not <laughs> expected United to be in the top four. Yeah, they are not sure. in the top four. Sheffield and Wolves are actually... Burnley itself are actually fighting for those positions that these teams were not fighting for in the past. This this goes to how these teams have been investing. If you look at Burnley, uh, Sean Dyke has been investing in British talent. Yes. And he goes to the lower leagues, gets the people, he chooses people who fit his system. His system is very physical. So he chooses the players that are right for his system. Go to Arsenal. They had a man on the rain for over 22 years. They brought in Unai Emery. Yeah. He tries to say he, he stabilized the ship. I don't think he did stabilize that ship. He made it uh, more of, they didn't have a, stra a strategy or a plan at all. Yes. Um, now they have uh, somebody who has been in that team, Michael Arteta. Yeah. And we seemingly he has some plan. We've seen some direction. We're seeing some gameplay. So if you look at Manchester United yeah. on the other side, they had Moyes. They brought in Mourinho. They brought in Van Gaal. Van Gaal. Now they have Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That inconsistency. If you go to these other teams, I'm not saying they didn't have they didn't have inconsistencies of their own yeah. because Everton have been in the same way of firing and, and hiring managers. Yeah, yes. But if you look at a club like Sheffield United, yeah. they have a game plan and the right for players. These players were all the way from the lower leagues. I was watching their documentary recently. Yeah. They were in the lower leagues with the same players yes. up to now. These players understand each other. They know what is expected. Yeah, 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 they yeah, expected yeah. of each other. But yeah. but, but this is the point. This is yes. the point of Sora was driving to yeah. the game this weekend. Tottenham versus Wolves. Yeah. That's the 
do or die game and for that's a game sides. for both sides because Spurs right now they are three they are, they are three points out they are four points away from Chelsea yeah. Wolves are one point behind Tottenham yeah. and Wolves have been playing spectacular football this season nobody can argue about that yeah. so if you look at Spurs on the other side they don't have their reliable strikers so you in, in the last Without three games in the last three games they've only scored one goal yeah. in the last three games so it's very difficult for them so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna watch that game so keenly because I think Wolves are looking forward to going back to qualifying even if it's so Champions League they want to qualify again for the Europa Euro. they've given it a run this season they're in the round of 16 yeah. so I think Nuno Espirito Santos tells his, his judges some of you should be playing in, in Champions League yeah. let's try and make it real, real and yeah. see what, where we go from there the question is it, how bad is it for Tottenham at the moment you have lost Harry Kane you have lost Song <coughs> and you don't seem to have a backup plan for this kind of players to come on to your setup yeah, it's a, it's a huge blow for the Jose Mourinho side. Yeah. So I don't think if he has any other plan than to plant some uh, some players in their unusual uh, Position. uh, positions. Yeah. So look at uh, Sissoko. I think he'll have to force Sissoko to move up front a little bit to maybe try and uh, step up uh, in the Hurricanes' uh, 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 shoes. Sissoko is out. Uh, he's injured. Is he's out. injured also, yeah. <laughs> so it's a very big problem for Tottenham yes. uh, side. I think uh, he'll just play around with all those players who are fit you see, uh, sorry, uh, my, uh, at the moment. My biggest problem with Spurs has been even before Harry Kane went out with an injury, even before Son went out with an injury, his team, or Jose Mourinho's Tottenham, started being this team we've seen with Jose, a team that is rigid, a team that only depends on counter attack and if you look at how tottenham played again uh, with with pochettino in there yeah. they were a possessive team True. they looked to win the ball back immediately they lost it yeah. and that is how these players were accustomed to playing yeah. right now i'm telling adavellard not to be on the ball and if he gets on the ball to be very clinical at it now that, that's hard to ask for somebody who is now 30 something is turning 30. so uh, again these are the things that uh, you look at this and say even if Harry Kane was there. I'm not sure he would be banging the number of goals he was banging because yeah. more, he was more accustomed to chances being created. Yeah. Right now, they're creating an average of three chances a game. Wow. That's where Spurs have fallen to. You've heard it. That's how <laughs> badly it is for Tottenham Hotspur. But also, the biggest game tomorrow will be Everton versus Man United. Carlo Ancelotti versus Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It is a game that <laughs> every United fan all the time that United has been successful, <laughs> yeah. they know that we have to beat Everton. And if they don't beat Everton, their season is done and dusted. Is this that season of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer going out there and starting to beat teams that traditionally, when United wins against them, they perform well in the league? Yeah, I think uh, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer lost to Burnley's uh, since 1962 for the first time so i i think uh, he has uh, he has his guns blazing all the way from uh, after losing that match so we've <laughs> seen everything going on on his side uh, very well yeah. he has done it in the europa uh, europa champions league yeah. he has done it in, even in the league for the past three matches mm -hmm. so i think uh, with his uh, the introduction of bruno fernandez yes. with the uh, in the squad, in the starting eleven, I think he has caught up with the situation. He has caught up with Fred in the middle pack of the uh, the playing unit, yes. and up, up front we have the uh, the James. We have James yeah. introduction also of Igalo. He has done well. So I think Ole is not uh, is not ready to lose any any other game uh, uh, after after the loss against Van. But, but mm -hmm. One game that has been uh, has to be haunting on the Kuna Solskjaer have been informed <laughs> has got to be for the four nil. I, I was gonna, I was, I was waiting, I was just waiting for us to get there, you know. <laughs> I knew we were going there, but I was waiting. Yeah? Um, this is the thing, oh, this, from there. <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah. This weekend, <laughs> Manchester United will not be having Anthony Martial, they will be depending on Odion Igalo. True, this. Some change. Let's 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 start there. There's some change. Yeah. We have sat on around this desk and we said it clearly when the start, season started. Oleguna Solskjaer's expectation will only be to take this team to at least into a Champions League Champions position League, yes. because he, he's trying to build to rebuild this team. This team right now, in the last six seven games, they have six clean sheets. Yeah. That's an improvement. A big, a very a big, big one. one. Yes. So, if you look at this team right now, 
they're playing well. The phone demolition, what was before those <laughs> clean sheets started coming? <laughs> the phone demolition yes. was the, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer described it as his lowest moment as a manager. Yes. But even though he described it as his lowest moment in, as a manager, the key thing to take home is he said he noticed some of the players that should not be playing for, for Manchester, Manchester United. United yeah. That is the key. That's yeah. the kicker. So he knew this player, this player, this player, yeah, X. So and, 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 uh, that's the point. Yeah. And that's, that's the what was lacking. Yeah. Because people were asking, is he ruthless enough to leave out some players off the team? Players that have egos, the likes of Paul Pogba, yeah. the, li the likes of Harry Maguire. Can he, can he bench Harry Maguire? That's the bigger question. Question. So I think for me, I don't see them losing 4-0, yeah. but I think that 4-0 demolition was a learning lesson yeah, yeah. for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and, and, and all, all, all his yeah. charges. And right now, yeah. I think Everton, last weekend, they were, they were just unlucky at Emirates. Yes. If you look at the last moment, <laughs> covered Lewin, his head are going <laughs> centimeters <laughs> wide. I, I, I think for them, Everton are also having some run of their yeah. own. And this is going to be one of the games you watch because I think it's going to be open football. Yeah. The, the and chances is, are going to be the, there. The thing is I put across you is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tactics now have to come to the fore because now he's going against a well-known manager. Even Mikel Arteta went against Ancelotti last weekend and we saw yeah. how he performed. Yeah. Now it's the time of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer Sorry. to go against <laughs> Ancelotti. Do we, Ole Gunnar's tactics inspire confidence in Manchester United at the moment? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll go for Manchester United because uh, he has basic wingers. Yes. He has uh, good attacking uh, up fronts. We have uh, the introduction of Igalo now because he's familiar to the league. Yes. He has been in Watford, he has been banging goals uh -huh. uh, uh, alongside D uh, Dini. So I, I think he has just started uh, and in future I think uh, they'll buy him not about the loan. Yeah. Yeah. But on the question on the question yeah, on the question of tactics. Yeah. On the question of tactics, this Oleguna Sosha has proven this season that he gets his tactics right. Yeah. He proved it against Jurgen Klopp, where it's the only team that has gotten a point uh, on Liverpool this season. He proved it against Pep Guardiola twice. twice. He has proven it against um, uh, against Frank Lampard, Tottenham, Tottenham Jose Mourinho. Yeah, yeah. So he, he has proven himself that as uh, a tactics, guys, he has, yeah. uh, uh, on his tactics, he can get them right. The bigger question was: Can he break? Can his team break down um, teams that come and sit in? Yeah. Everton is not the team that is going to sit in, yeah. and now that's where the challenge comes in. So Everton is going to try and look for possession. Yeah. Can Manchester United rely on counter-attack alone to defeat this team? No. And right now you have a player at the middle of the park, Bruno Fernandes, who wants the ball. Who wants the ball. So he, that, that's going to be the big <laughs> difference in the midfield. And, and I'm, I hope, I'm just hoping yeah. that Gomez plays for, for, let, for, for let's Everton. Leave there. Let's leave it at there. Let's leave it at there. I'm begging for five <laughs> minutes because I had forgotten that we had the Carabao Cup final. Yeah, yeah. this weekend, yeah. Aston Villa going all the way against Manchester City. It, it's been a long time since we saw Aston Villa come back to the way they've come back onto the league at the moment. But it was a big surprise for Aston Villa to make it to the final of the Carabao Cup. On Monday Night Football, uh, Jeremy Carragher and Phil ne and Gary Neville were told to set up uh, one of the greatest teams of the last century. Yes. And Aston Villa made it in that list. Yeah. That's how they good were they were. The yeah, you know, th that's how good they were. Yeah. So, um, so I, it's I think. Not a surprise. It's a <laughs> Uh, but, but I think, again, it goes to Aston Villa in this season, yeah. they were the second highest uh, investing team in transfers. They, had, they spent £115 million. Wow. That's, that, that's, that's staggering, you know? Yeah. So, for them, they're not the likes who go for big players. They go for Treza Gays, they go for mm -hmm. players, mm -hmm. uh, Bonas Amata. Yeah. They won't go for players that are costing £50 million, pounds, but they'll go yeah. for players £15, £20 million, pounds, but they have a plan with those players. Yeah. And if you look at how they've been playing this season, they have challenged even the best teams. Uh, Liverpool had to sweat to get points uh, against them. Yeah, yeah. Manchester City had to struggle with them. Yeah. Manchester United, I don't want to even talk about that. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, it really goes to speak on how these teams have been investing. And you were asking about these teams who are fighting now to get into the Europa League positions, yes. into the Champions League positions, Absolutely. and, 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 and that's, the point. Yeah. that's the point. That's point. These teams have realized we cannot muscle these teams in terms of resources, but we can muscle them in terms of talent scouting, yes. and that's what they're getting right. Yeah. If you look at Manchester United in the last seven or six years, they've getting their, they've gotten their scouting wrong. They got the likes of Di Maria, they flopped. Memphis Depay, they flopped. Falcao, we have even forgotten yeah. Sanchez now, <laughs> who is the highest paid in the English Premier League. So again, these are the things that these teams are getting right, and as Aston Villa will disturb Manchester City in the, in the final, but City will take it away.
one player will be happy to be watching in that final has got <coughs> Mbwana Samantha. Mbwana Samantha plays a, a drop back kind of like striking position when he comes on to play. With the defensive problems that Man City is having at the moment, Lampard is not going to be there. I don't think what Amendi can step up onto that level. Fernandinho is good and he plays there very well. But Mbwana Samantha has got to be that player who can trouble that defense. Uh, I don't think I don't think because uh, Pep Guardiola's uh, charges. They, uh, I think in the defense line they have that depth. Yes. So I think uh, the introduction. Uh, maybe John Stones will be fit at, uh, in, in in the match. Maybe. Uh, you know. <laughs> just let me make a joke here. Like I was watching. I, I was reading some of some of the things and and yes. about before Tottenham and Wolves. And I was reading about the players who will be out. Eh? Yes. And you know what they wrote about Wanyama? Uh -huh. Out of favor. So <laughs> I think uh, yeah. John Stones. It's the same case with John Stones. He's out of favor. You know. Yeah. yeah. So he's out of favor. So, yeah, so again, yeah. So I think um, Bona Samata is going to have a hard time maybe to break the chains against the uh, Pep Guardiola's defense line. Yeah. Uh, so I think Man City are well versed and uh, they have that vast experience with yeah. out of uh, maybe pulling uh, pulling a win from uh, Bonabo, it will yeah. give the, it will give them a, a higher morale of maybe clinching <laughs> the title and. Well, Maybe, doing yeah, yeah, and doing but, all you know, terms. one thing that I know about Pep Guardiola, and that doesn't change, doesn't matter whether his team is playing poorly or not, is that he demands the very best. Yeah. You remember uh, Watford <laughs> final, <laughs> the FA final <laughs> against Watford? Yes. They have scored six goals, but he's yeah. still angry when a yeah. player misses yeah. one, a chance to score. True. And even after the game, they have won the title, yes, yeah. but he goes to Raheem Sterling and tells him, I need you to improve this, I need you to improve this. And that, he is that meticulous. And I think in this game, he sees an opportunity to get a Cup. That is something they need this season. To console himself. To at least, not yeah. even himself, to at least console his bosses yeah. because this season has been that season for them. And Emerick Laporte again limped off against um, in Real Madrid. Madrid. And that is another bro. He had just come back. Yeah. And, and I'm just worried how Manchester City Seems will be playing again. Going to the yeah. That is not the only game that we are following on this weekend. It's also in Italy. We've got Inter Milan against La Juventus. Game. If Juventus lose, we hear that Allegri <laughs> is on the sidelines there come back as a coach of Juventus. How do you think <coughs> that match will go? Because also, Inter Juve can decide yeah. who is going to live to the league at the end of the day. Yeah, I think uh, Inter Milan, for the past uh, few years, they have rejuvenated themselves yes. and they are coming back uh, again to their lost glory. So I think uh, for the, they did a very good signing, Lukaku. Yes. He's banging goals each and every day. So I think he's going for the uh, he's going for the victory against uh, uh, Juventus. I'm, I'm gonna say this. We, we talked about the biggest losers. How did we forget Juventus? How? Just how did this? Yeah, how did it? Yeah, how did, did slip our minds, man? I, I mean, yeah. it's just uh, if you're talking about Asari, and since joining Juventus, he's not seemed as if he himself. You know, yes. the way we used to so, to know yeah. him as a car manager, he's been troubled, honestly. Yes. Despite him having all the talent in that team, you've got Cristiano Ronaldo, you've the likes of Sami Khedira in that teams, you've got um, uh, you've got Ramsey in that team, Ramsey you've got Bonucci, Bonucci, one of the most experienced defenders. You've got Chesney, who was a very improved goalkeeper. He goalkeeper, doesn't seem yeah. like the same goalkeeper was at Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. So I think this for him, he, he really needs to win against Inter and at least take the the the, Cop, the, the Serie A title this season yeah. for him to be able to at least show the bosses that I can be able to manage this team. Yeah. Because the, the, there are so many questions. He has lost to some teams that you don't imagine Juventus losing to. Yes. And at the moment, Inter Milan are six points behind Juve and they have one game in hand, which is the game they're playing this weekend. Yeah. So... That is a chance for Sari to open up a bigger gap. But I think Inter Milan have also, in the last run of few fixtures, they have they have not been uh, scoring goals as they used to we, when the season started. They have come come under some stale period. But I think for this game, they will bring their very best. And I think this is the game where... Predictions quickly. This is the game where Lukaku will be doing something. So, uh, uh, <laughs> predictions. I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm, it's, it's not gonna be a very clean game. It's a yeah. game where there will be a lot of flying tackles. Um, I think it's gonna be... I'm gonna go one nil in favor of Inter. Inter Milan. Wow, great score, Eddie. Me too. One nil. Yeah. yeah, Inter Milan. That's where we come <laughs> to the end of the touchline here. Big show that we have had today. So this afternoon, where are you heading to? It's a sports weekend, a serious one. <laughs> Uh, it's a tough weekend, but it's my off day, so I'm trying. I'm trying to catch up on some things. So yeah, I'm just gonna go home and watch some fixtures. Yeah. Uh, but mainly is um, also planned for the week. So I don't think I'll be going to any stadium after this. Oh,
Yeah, I'm just going to back to home yeah. because tomorrow I'm having a very big oh. match. Yeah, so yeah. a league match, Buruburu Buru Sports. Yeah, yeah Triru Stadium. So uh -huh. just going to relax home and rejuvenate myself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's where we come to the end of the touch here on Y254. Big thank you to Idi Shikanda who plays for Zetek University, right? True. Big team there. We'll be traveling to come and see how you're playing there and see how you perform. Samuel Mwana and Juguna is a colleague here at the newsroom and we, we were honored to have him here for the show. Other guys, we want to say thank you to Akweto Bingaro Kamunya, who is a sports lawyer, and Mwalim Kikechi Kombo, the director of innovations at the Kenya Rugby Union. So if we are having time you can go ahead to the Jamori showground and enjoy Nondis versus Mwamba and then Homeboys versus KCB Rugby Football Club will be your way but also during the night biggest matches Kenya is in Los Angeles for the very first time not in Nevada and they are playing in the leg there the rugby series leg the first game against South Africa will be at 10 35 p.m. and then at 1.31 a.m. we'll be playing Northern Ireland and then in the morning at 5.35 a.m. we'll be playing Canada. I am Robert Osoro. On behalf of everyone who has made this broadcast a success, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. <laughs>